Hi, Stephen. How are you today? I'm doing fine. And thank you for having me as part of this series, Nicole. Awesome. Awesome. You know what? The last video we went so well and I thought, you know what? You have your wealth of knowledge when it comes to marketing and, you know, yeah. you've got a book and we're going to talk about that towards the end of the video. But um, let's just get right into this. So how do we end the war between sales and marketing? One of the big things we can do is I look at the field trip, which is one of the places where there's interaction between marketing and sales. And this goes back to some work I did with Paul Miles at Goldfarb. He was the president of Goldfarb. And I was running a marketing group trying to decide how to do exactly that. How, how do we create a better interface? How do we create a better position? And one of the real points that was a stickler for sales was marketing would have a KPI of we have to go out in the field. Well, that's great. And they would send an email to sales, or in those days, it was regular mail. But they would send it to them and say, um, I need to come into your market, and I need to find out some information. And that would probably be about the whole gist of the objective. And that's just, I mean, that sets you up for what they call the broker tour. Okay. Are you familiar with what a broker tour is? Tell me. I'll give you an example. When I joined Ralston Purina, we were setting up the marketing group and the sales group had been set up about two months before. So I decided to go out in the field and see what it was really like for pet food because we're talking dog, dog chow, cat chow. So I set up a trip to start in British Columbia and work my way east. We had a sales manager for each one of the provinces and we had a Western sales manager. So I go to Vancouver, uh, they meet me at night, we have dinner, they can't pick me up in the morning and we have breakfast and we go to the first store and they take me to the section of dog food and everything's all faced up and all the sizes are there and the big, big ones are at the front of the store and the manager comes over and tells me what a great job we're doing. And I thought, oh, great. So we went to the second store, same thing. All the brands are faced up, all the sizes are available. The manager thinks that, you know, we walk on water as well as thought of it. So we sat down for lunch and I said, uh, you know, every, everything's great here. Um, I think I'll get on the plane and go to Calgary because I know we've got problems there. And, you know, you guys are doing such a great job. You don't really need the guy for marketing. And the sales manager for BC got up and he came back to the table and he said, um, let's take you to one more store before you make that decision. I said, oh, OK. So we got to a Safeway in the middle of Vancouver, surrounded by apartments. So it's a good Safeway. Got to the front door and they said, uh, you go in and go to aisle six, you're going to find coffin freezers, which is freezers full of, you know, peas, potatoes, and all that stuff. And on top of that, you're going to find the dog food. And I thought, well, that's really strange. So I, I went there, and sure enough, here we have these huge bags of 50-pound dog food that you got to reach across the freezer and pull off. And as I'm standing there out of the corner of my eye, I hear this guy yelling and screaming, running at me, and he's He's a butcher and he's got a butcher's knife. And he says, who are you? And I said, uh, I'm, I'm from marketing at Ralph and Prina. And he says, get out of my store. I'm going to call the police on you. And I went, OK, OK, I'm out of here. So the broker tour in the morning was they took me to all these great stores and they had two salesmen going in front of me. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is they would go into the store, make sure all the sizes were there, spiff the st st store manager money. And in the afternoon, when they took me to this first store that would not speak to reps, was in terrible shape. Half her sizes were out of stock. And they said, OK, so now you've seen one extreme to the other. And I said, great, don't give me the broker tour. I'll give you another quick example. When I worked at General Mills, between the airport and General Mills head office, there was a Dominion store, because we're going back to the 70s oh, yeah. now and uh, which is metro today and uh that store carried every product you could imagine that general mills had anywhere in canada because people would on the way they'd say oh there's a store can we just stop in there and we go in and 
we'd show them the, you know, Betty Crocker owned half the, the shelving for cake mixes. We go to the cereal section. We had two thirds. Every brand was there. You could think of every size. And then they all thought that, you know, gee, you guys in Canada are doing a great job because they rarely went to another store. They were going to head right. off of, for presentations. So the getting out in the sales uh, team and being in the field is critical, but marketing does it wrong so many times and so many different ways. Wow, these are really interesting uh, examples. And it's funny, you get one impression going into one or two stores and a totally different impression. It's yeah. all it's all perception, right? It's all perception. Yeah. So then what is sales responsibility in this regard? The key here is to make sure that you're going to give marketing uh, when they're out in the field, give them give them both sides, take them to some accounts that are doing great so they get a sense for, you know, things are going well in the market, but then take them to some problem accounts oh. and get them in front of the clients or get them to see the, the shelving or get them to go to the manufacturing facility, whatever, you know, if you're B2B mm -hmm. and get the, give them the opportunity to really do their now. Here again, we're going to set up a problem with marketing. Marketing has to understand that sales takes the lead. And I know this sounds intuitively obvious, but I can't tell you the number of product managers that I've ridden with both when I was in the corporate area and as a consultant. And we get in front of a client and sales will be making a pitch and about halfway through marketing go, uh, excuse me, John, that's that's not quite right. Uh, oh. Actually, this product doesn't doesn't do that. Oh my goodness! And, right and in I front go, of the client. Oh. <laughs> right in front of the client. Yeah. Bag over my head. Right. That's embarrassing. Well, the first thing I would make marketing understand is, you know, after they get back on the plane and go back to head office, the salesperson has to get up in the rain and the snow in the morning and go back and deal with that client, and you've just completely undermined them. Oh, my goodness. And this happens frequently in your experience? Yes, yes it happens far too often because marketing is passionate about their brand. And if you're misrepresenting it, they want to jump in. Mm -hmm. What they have to understand is there's ways to correct this. I mean, I understand the the salesperson's giving misinformation. If they are, actually, that's marketing's fault. Mm -hmm. marketing, marketing hasn't provided them the information either in you know, files that they can look at or promotional material they can do. It's like a trade show when you're handing out material. Right. Marketing, marketing often doesn't look at it. And that's just wrong. They need to make sure <sighs> that the brands are being represented appropriately. Okay, so let's say this happens, like you say, um, yeah. way too many times. What would be a correct response in that situation? Let's say sales does make a little fib or two in that interaction with the client right. and then marketing can, can correct that problem, but what would be the right way for them to do so? There'd be three things they should do. The first thing they should do is not say anything in that meeting. Wait till they okay. get back in the car, they're back in the car. And then they could say, uh, excuse me, Susan, you know, you, you said that our product mm -hmm. could do X, Y, and Z. Uh, actually it can do X, but it can't do Y and Z. You know, you, you said that this was for uh, dogs that are working dogs. Well, dog chow isn't for working dogs. It doesn't have enough protein. You want to serve field and farm. So correct them and then say, hey, I'm going to provide the information so that you can understand where the brands fit. That's on me as a marketing person. The third thing to do is when you write up the trip report, and that's, again, another thing marketing forgets to do. They get back to head office, and they've got their emails to do, and they've got all the fires going on, and they don't write the trip report. And you should write that trip report within 48 hours of hitting head office, because mm -hmm. the jungle drums in the, in the marketplace are a lot faster. And if you've dressed down a couple of salespeople, or in their mind, you've dressed them down. In your mind, you just corrected them. They're going to go, oh, you know, these marketing guys, they think they know it all. They've never right. carried the bag like we have. And 
there you go. The marketing war has started again. But if you go right. back to that office and do a field trip report and say, hey, something I've learned is we need to provide better education to our salespeople so they understand where the brand's position. I mean, it's it's that simple. That's great. That's great. But my question is still, how do we correct that wrong in that particular instance? Like the wrong happened. They had the client meeting. How do we then correct that right away? That was we my have, question. We have to give sales the tools and work with them to figure out how they can go back and explain it to the client because they know the client best. I mean, is this a this one they can go back and say, hey, John, you know, the, the fable that we've been dealing with is the brand can do X, Y, and Z. It really can't do Z. And marketing has now given us the right information. So I can tell you, here's some facts to support what it really can do. It's better to be upfront and honest in those situations, because obviously mistakes are going to happen from time to time. Yeah. It's how they're handled after the fact. And probably I would say within 24 hours, not waiting yes. around too long. Yes. Right. Yes. And showing yes. the client that everybody is working together as opposed to butting heads. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's so obvious. It's so obvious, but you know, everyone has their own objectives and, and they get lost in the whole situation. So this is very good. So before we end off, tell me, uh, Stephen, about your book. What's the title of your book? The title of the book is Accelerate Marketing Growth. And it's a business book. Uh, it's the second one I've written. And the concept is nobody needs to read another marketing book. So I took a page out of The Wealthy Barber. And what we have is we have a president and a CFO who are trying to figure out how do we get the company to the next level? And she has a neighbor who's done a lot of marketing in the B2B, B2C, and not-for-profit area. He's now a prophet at the local university. So they sit down and actually have a talk to him about various elements of the marketing mix, the product, price, place, promotions, social media. And it's an easy read. It's meant to be, you know, you're sitting on the airplane, you'd like to read a business book. Here's an easy read. So it's not an academic book on how to do marketing. I mean, the people that should read this are salespeople, uh, managers in other departments, uh, senior management who've never had much to do with marketing, but now are responsible for it. So it give them a base to understand what marketing is about and how it can truly add value to the company when you do a strategic marketing plan. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. And good luck with your sales. <laughs> it's always on the go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye.